What's up, everybody, and welcome to the new and improved box office banter. We got the new spot all loaded up. We'll see if Rodney can make it around here. And, you know, we yeah. helped Rodney out here, man. He's actually sitting behind the table with yes. us. Welcome to the big boys' table, I know. Rodney. I should, Look at you, I dude. You Looking so awkward professional. Right now. <laughs> How's it feel? Are we recording? You join, yes. You, you, the you big hit dogs. record. <laughs> you were the one that did that. <laughs> okay. This is weird because I like looking at Rodney. Now, I can't, now you at can't see him. And when I talk to you, I have to scroll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Dude, yeah. You're, I ain't going to lie. Dude, that table's cracking me the fuck up. <laughs> but, uh, it's down here, not up here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we got for you. Anyways, uh, so banter buddy. Regina Staudenheimer. Tell us why. Yes. I'm about to. Sorry. Uh, come on now. Uh, basically, we had the 500, I almost said dollar, 500 movie giveaway, and Regina came in. One, and, one movie giveaway yeah. at 500. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. However you want to explain it, one movie's being given away at 500 members, and she came in clutch at the very end and just put a bunch, a lot of leave, not leave requests, requests came into the thing that we have to approve as admin and admins, and that really set us over the top. So we wanted to give the Banner Buddy of the Week to Regina Soudenheimer for those reasons. She killed it with that. And then, of course, the winner of the 500. Oh, yes. So Whatever I'm calling it now, I'm turned around. Yeah, we hit that 500 member mark. So the person that, yep, celebration. You should have brought a little. Dude, I wanted to. <laughs> so bad. Um, but yeah, we uh, went through, counted the, everybody and who um, added the most people. And the winner, the person who invited the most, is Austin Neophis. Oh, yeah. Um, so we will be reaching out to you. Uh, Mr. Austin, and uh, we'll send you a picture of all the movies that we have in Pee Wee's Playhouse. You'll be able to pick getting. one of your <laughs> choosing. So we'll be in touch with you shortly. I hope you don't like Pee Wee's Playhouse because I don't think that's an option. <laughs> yes, sir. But of course, the movie that we are going to talk about Fury. This little ditty right yes, here. Yes, sir. Why don't you kick it off, Josh? Since Me? I know you have so much to say. Well, not I'm my, sure it's going to. <laughs> sayings come in a little later in the movie. Yeah. Oh well, you can still say your beginnings unless you you really are just going to harp in the middle I, mainly. That's where I'm trying to come in. The thick of it. I'm trying to come in. I can start this one okay. off if you want me to. Go for it, man. Dude, you are just professional over there, man. I'm loving it. Well, Hi. <laughs> My name's I'm Rodney. Rodney. I don't know if you recognize <laughs> me because you only see the side of my face normally, but this is actually what I look like. This is me. Hello. So Fury uh, starts off really, really tough. Furious with with the uh, <laughs> with the horse galloping through or whatever. And then oh, dude, I, I borderline thought it was a Rob Zombie flick. <laughs> yeah, no, I was having flashes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, don't tell me. Is this a Rob Zombie war flick? And what would that look like? That's but you have question. no idea what's about to happen. <laughs> And then Brad Pitt just jumps out of nowhere and stabs this dude in the eye. What an interest. Just like so brutal, you know, and it, it just, it started the movie off just right in my opinion. 100% dude. And it doesn't take long at all for you to really get acquainted with the cast, dude. The no. cast in this movie is flawless. Not oh. just them as actors, but the characters they play, they were perfect for their parts, it seemed like. So yeah, the great cast... But one problem I had is I didn't I didn't feel invested in the characters. To a, really? Yeah, to a point where like Opposite when me. they died I wasn't sad whoa, or anything. Whoa. They don't die. They died. <laughs> they die. Well, we gotta. We're not there yet, but I understand. If <laughs> if if they were to die, like I wasn't going to be affected by it. The, the really Brad Pitt's character was the one that I was most invested in, and it wasn't even no. to a large extent for me. That is insane. What was it about <laughs> each character that, if you if you even know, like what about each character that you didn't find that? Well, I, it's not that I didn't like the characters. I just don't think the movie did a good job making me feel for them. For me, like it, emotional. Like, yeah, like when if they were to die, it's not like oh, I was so invested in that character. Hmm. For me, and it, Brad Pitt was did Brad such Pitt's character job. was the the one that I was most invested mm -hmm. in. But like John Bernthal's character or even Shia LaBeouf, like I don't feel like they mapped. I don't know. I don't know how they to explain maximized. It. Did you feel their like the potential? chemistry was off? no, no. The chemistry between them all was great. Yes, I thought that was flawless. Some of the best chemistry I've seen yes. on screen. It was yeah. that was great. It was just when 
certain characters die, I wasn't like, oh shit, he's dead. Like, yeah. I didn't feel emotional about them. I mean, yeah, I, I can understand. I've seen movies like that where at the end say, of like, characters, yeah. you know, something happens to them where I'm just like, yeah, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's okay. Yeah, and that's, that's how <laughs> I okay. felt for pretty much all, really? all of these guys. Yeah, for me, this is one of those rare movies where literally as soon as they hit the screen, just the way their banter back and forth, I immediately was invested in all of them and the chemistry, like you said, which is perfect. And in general, man, I feel like I didn't even have to know them yet. Like within like two minutes of them being on screen, I'm like, I love these guys. This is awesome. So like we were on the complete. But is it opposite. because of the actor or the character? The character, like I, that's what I said so before if, we jumped if into this. Shia LaBeouf was a completely different. If it was a nobody playing him, you would have been just as invested. Yeah, I think so. It also that, depends on they, the degree of their and now, And see, and, and also in a way you can't do that because he, obviously, if you put a shit actor in there, well, yeah, yeah. I, but it goes both ways with that because he might not execute but that character that well. But it's also that they were all fleshed out so perfectly in terms of not, I can see they aren't necessarily as deep, but that's something this movie does so well is it doesn't need to tell you about each character. You can see it. This movie was a master class i think in terms of subtle storytelling like picking up on what the character had underneath without saying or needing to say like he'd been through this he'd been through that which is something i'm going to talk about later too so maybe that could shed some light or maybe you just weren't picking it up that way which is well, no, no problem I, but i did or it i didn't do agree with what you way. said but it yeah. just didn't have the impact didn't, didn't sync up the same that way i was wanting yeah, I yeah, like we're on different I like, ends of the spectrum, but I got you. I like in the beginning when they they get back to I guess what is it the home base or whatever mm-hmm. that uh, that guy's like where's the rest of them and uh, War Daddy Brad Pitt's like this is it we're this it is everybody and then they get Norman good old Norman <laughs> he's been in the uh, what army for what do you say eight, eight weeks? weeks eight weeks eight and he's weeks. A, he gets assigned. To the group of, you know, Bible, Shia LaBeouf, uh, Michael Pena as Gordo, John Bernthal, who was a freaking crazy dude in this one. Oh, yeah. I love John Bernthal. I like when he meets War Daddy and he's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm your new uh, assistant driver or whatever. And Brad Pitt's like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, no, you're not. you're not. No, you are no, not. No, no way. <laughs> and then the, another, the intense scene when he first meets uh, Bible, Shia LaBeouf, who is amazing. In this movie, say what you want about Shia LaBeouf. This movie will change your mind about him. Yeah, for sure. Whenever he meets Norman, and he's he's he has that like tears in his eyes almost. He's like, mm-hmm. "Wait till you see." And Norman's like, "See what?" He's like, "See what a man can do to another man." Mm-hmm. You're just like, yeah. "Oh shit!" This this new guy in the army is about to see what war is really like, and he does right off the bat. Oh, it takes yeah. no time. No. And that that's the thing, too, man, is you can see on their faces, without saying it, it's just clear as day, they have those moments where Shy might have the tears in his eyes. Brad Pitt's character might be looking off into the distance. They all have those moments where it kind of pans in on them, where I think there's even a moment where Shy is like laying on top of like where you poke your head out out of the tank, and he's just laying there looking yeah, empty. So and it's, it's just like... You see them like, uh, best job I ever had. Like, they're always hyping yep. themselves up. But you see those moments where they kind of separate from the crowd and they have their moments where anybody that's doing like this, they're not saying anything, but you, you, you typically get a response from somebody like, are you okay, man? Because you think, you can see they're into some deep shit. So even though you can tell, it's not what they're saying, they're just body language is saying, I want no part of fucking being here right now. But they're man enough to stick with it. They have no choice. They're just going to get it done, and they have too much pride. And there's something to respect about that. And that goes back to kind of what I was saying about, you know, a lot of what the emotions and what builds the characters for me is like what they don't say. It's in just what they do and the way the movie's directed. Well, they get Norman, and they, they put him in the tank, and they're trying to, you know, tell him what he needs to do. Yeah. And and then they're they're off. They go on to their uh Hang on, can I pause you for a second? Yeah. And go back a little bit when they first of all he says he's never seen the inside of a tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which he's... from 
a military perspective, you understand why Brad Pitt was like, no, you're not on our team. Yeah. Because yeah, you're sure. only as strong as your weakest link. Yeah. Which we see people die because he didn't shoot that dude mm -hmm. in the yeah, little yeah. forest. But then he, they tell him to get some hot water from the cafeteria and clean the inside of the tank. Mm -hmm. And he, like, picks the dude's, like, half the dude's face up. And, like, that's when he's like, oh, shit, like, I'm in this now. And, like, he gets that realization that, mm -hmm. like, oh, well, fuck. The, the one you scene where it. I think he's like, oh, shit, like, this is war, is whenever uh, those guys were running, the kids were running through the, the woods, mm -hmm. and he didn't shoot them because yep. he says yes. they're kids. But then they, they light the they tank on fire tank in front of them. And that guy comes out of the tank, and he's on fire, and Norman's just watching it, and the dude shh commit suicide because he didn't want to burn to death that's like one of the first deaths that norman sees and he's and then now he's he's just in it yeah, yeah. and it was and knowing that it was because of him like that was his fault that oh that yeah. dude died because he shoots that kid in the little wooded patch that guy doesn't die so like him and, knowing that and like the guilt that he probably felt from that and then war daddy 100%. and them are just like we gotta teach him you know we gotta show him which comes up uh a few minutes later, actually. Yeah. I won't get to it right now, but yeah, I, I, just, I think you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just love how they have to earn their, you know, their respect because that's exactly how it has to be. And I love the element of that, kind of like what you were saying, where, you know, part of it, you was like, damn, dude, like how could they do this to Norman? How could they be so hard on him? And we'll get into kind of what you're talking about. That can maybe even be what, what piggybacks off of this is they're so hard on him, and you're just like, man, he's just human. He's human. That's all it is. We're looking at a human being. He's a like, kid. How can we be this hard on him? But you can look the other way at Brad Pitt and company, and you're over there like, I mean, this is war. Like, you can get us fucking murdered. Like you said, weakest link. And it's just like that just back and forth with that, and you can feel it as a viewer, the emotions of that. Like, man, I feel for Norman right now, but you can also feel for them. And what's great about it is you can, again, that subtlety, you can see it when Brad Pitt and other ones do stuff. They'll walk away from the situation, and it's almost like you can kind of read their mind. They're like, how, how much human do I have left? Like, what has the war done to me? Uh, one of the scenes... Uh, that was really that I thought was really cool. I said this in the group chat. Was mm -hmm. they well? They went to another commander, I guess is what you'd say. And he's like, "How many tanks you bring?" And he said, four He's like, "I asked for ten So they're going over the battlefield plans, and they got to go across this field. And they get the four tanks lined up, and then all the soldiers behind them. I thought that was cool i thought that was a cool scene when they're shooting and you can see the tracer the tracer bullets flying through mm -hmm. um what else yeah so uh, yeah i got something was, after that part was that the scene where they sh the last tank got shot they blew up the last tank and is it are you talking yeah, I think about the there one? is three after that <clears throat> yeah so this was this whole scene <clears throat> i don't know <laughs> are you confused I don't, I don't remember. I may be confused. I don't know. I don't remember if that's where they lost the so, tank or not. So, yeah. They're, <laughs> one of the huge problems I had with the movie was that mm. scene where the tiger tank, the enemy tiger tank was in the, the um, bush hidden, and it blew up the back tank in the um, oh, line. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the reason I had a problem is because of my military background and the way I look at um, the strategic aspect of it, which you all probably didn't see anything wrong with shooting the last tank, did you? You probably should shoot the first. Yes, you would 100% all the time shoot the first tank because you halt the progress of the rest of the tanks. They yeah. can't go anywhere. Then you would shoot the last tank to box the middle ones in. Now they're stuck. Now you can just pick off the two or three or however many are in the middle. So it made zero sense to shoot the last tank first. Now, I know they did it for movie perspective because yeah. Fury's first, but put Fury second in line and shoot oh, yeah. the first tank and then the last. That made zero sense. Any commander in the military would know to shoot the first tank first. Also, building off of that, Fury was the only one of the tanks um, that was a 76-millimeter long rifle. Yeah, All the that. other tanks were 75 millimeters. <laughs> Now, <laughs> I, I thought it was what, a pistol. <laughs> what basically Fury was the only tank that was of any danger to the German tanks. So, what tank are you going to shoot first if you're a German? 
you're going to take out the most dangerous tank. So Fury would, that's the only tank that the Germans would have been firing at while these other 75 millimeters are around. An easy fix for that, make all the other tanks 76 millimeters so Fury's not the only one, and then it's not as bad of a mistake. Yeah, well Continuing cool. on with this scene, <laughs> I'm going to have you bite your tongue even more, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, and probably the biggest mistake out of all of it was the Tiger tank um, from the German side blew up the last tank. The American tanks retreated, and then they started pushing forward. And I think that's where the people started standing up in the field. I could be getting yeah. multiple scenes mixed up. No, you're right. But they, the Americans started pushing towards the single German tank which is hidden in the woods and what does the german tank do it leaves its cover and starts coming towards the american tanks why would you do that you're hidden in cover they don't know exactly where you are so you're going to say here i am shoot at me that made zero sense and was even a bigger mistake than shooting the last tank first or any of the other things go ahead brandon i know you're itching uh, i'm not itching when that come think of it appreciate that uh have you thought maybe the guy that chose to blow up the last tank could have been suffering from some form of like OCD or something like that? Like take no. out the last one. You can't no. be zero percent. <laughs> His life is on. The you line. can't be in the I military know, if you fucking, have OCD. Yeah, I, was saying, why I, I hope y'all are that. taking me seriously, right? <laughs> yeah, it just that, and me being in the military, that's why it bugged me so much. Like that made no sense, and it just kind of irked me. But other than that, the movie I think did a pretty good job. But yeah, me, I was like. Fucking right, bro. Nice explosion. The scene <laughs> after that when uh, they capture a Nazi and mm -hmm. War Daddy's like, let me see him. And then he wants Norman to kill yeah, the Nazi. Kill and then uh, they're going at it. He's like, you kill him or he kills you. And then Norman's like, kill me. Kill me. He mm -hmm. just wants out of it. Yeah. He's, su he's such a sweetheart pussy. He's such a sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then, yeah, like... Brad Pitt grabs oh him, holds him, gets the gun, and shoots him. He's just like, I just killed my first person. Yeah, and what does Pitt do? He gets on like one knee, looks out in the distance, and you can tell he's just like questioning everything. He's like, what am I going to do with Norman? Like, damn, like, I feel terrible. Like, what did I just do to Norman? Like, well, he, I, like I kind of got to do that. I'm this hardened person. I can't let my guard down. I have to be strong for my guys. I have to make he tough needed decisions. To, he needed to be able to trust Norman. Yeah, that he, he had could, to. That he could actually kill somebody. Exactly, 100%. But that him going away, thats I believe that's him sitting there, and it's kind of panning on his face and it looks empty. I think that's him being conflicted about it, not from a standpoint of you know being a leader because he knows what he has to do, but from a human standpoint and him questioning like his morals or just in general like just – like, man, like, is that what I should do? Or how am I going to get Norman to do this? He obviously didn't budge there. This is a bad situation. There was just a whole lot printed on his face that made you kind of dig into what he was thinking. And you could probably, you know, put two and two together. And, yeah, that was another problem I had with the movie was Norman's... That kneel down was terrible. Was Colin Norman's uh, character development from being terrified really? to shoot one person to... Just murdering people with a machine gun. I don't buy. Yeah, that was one his of my transformation notes. of just being ruthless and just murdering people. Really, like he that. goes Absolutely from a bitch to would not happen. That you, would, you would not change that quick over a. I don't know. Twenty four. I believe you would it. Not. If you kill someone, it. no. If you're in war and you've seen what Norman has seen in his first what yeah, two hours, no. and then he actually killed somebody. Yeah, like he, there are so many no. moments where he's like traumatized, really... and that's what's so great about like the characters too. Like John Bernthal's character, like Brad Pitt's doing it almost in a way where he's like, "I feel for you, but I got to do it, but I can't even let you know that I feel for you because if you do that, you're never gonna listen to me like I need you to." John Bernthal's character, you're kind of like, "This dude might just be a dickhead, but it's still gonna help him." But at, towards the end, you even hear Bernthal say, "Just like you're a good guy, Norman." Yeah, we might not be but you're a good guy. Yeah. And that like hit me like a ton of bricks when he said that because that confirmed I'm like, okay, he's got something in him too. But 
all the things that like the like you see that you see that like I don't want to say what scene but like him getting headlocked and then fucking with them and hyping them up like this is war Norman and all that and all the death he's seen and all the times he didn't pull the trigger I think there is a point where you would finally do it and once you felt that release there's no looking back like I think he just went over the edge now maybe you can say like I don't necessarily buy it but I think they sold it about as good as you could for me personally I think it I think it's sold oh Rodney's here oh shit I yeah. forgot yeah. I, dude, I didn't know she was here because I can only see how my peripheral vision. I was legitimately thinking that too. Like I was like, Rodney hadn't talked in a while. I was just waiting. But yeah, this one microphone. Yeah, yeah, I, like yeah I believed it hundred percent. Yeah, they didn't. I they didn't let it zero percent. They didn't let it go. Like they let. They made sure they wrote it out long enough to where it was this movie, organic to me. This movie was basically a dope ass war movie, and also the story of a a young kid. Turning from a bitch to a badass, dude, and that's I'm it. It, mixed in with that unit that's just fucking mm, tight. Oh, it. they're and so it's, perfect and, and together. It's, it's just that ebb and flow is fun to watch, and I think I'm a sucker for smaller unit war films. I think this is just like yeah. quick point, like when it's like a bunch of people and there's a bunch of actors we have to keep up with, even if they're developed well, like Game of Thrones style, where there's a million stars and the, and they do it well. Uh, I'm more partial, I think, to where you have four or five guys, like something like this, where they're in a tank, where I can really just focus in on them, personally. Yeah, I, I did like their chemistry between each other. Mm -hmm. It Definitely. was just the actual characters. Um, I got so that sounds yeah. like yeah, it sounds like that can't happen because you love the chemistry, but in a weird way, I can kind of see what you're saying. Like I might not agree with it, but you figure if there's chemistry, then you should like the characters. But there mm -hmm. can be chemistry without, I guess. Like I can see that leeway, even though it didn't affect me that way. I can kind of see like how you would think that because when you first said it, I was like, "How's that even possible? They have chemistry. The characters got to be good." And I was like, "Well, well it's not that the characters aren't good. It's they that just don't pull I don't in enough. Love them, yes. dude. I love them. Which I <laughs> I do wanted but to make I didn't love feel for them. them. It wasn't like, oh my god, they killed. I was gonna say Game of Thrones character, but if you haven't seen <laughs> that, I don't want to ruin it. Yeah, but um, yeah. So yeah. can we jump to another scene I had a huge problem with? Go is ahead, it past <laughs> the? Is it past the house stuff? Because I was going to dive into that a little bit. Okay, so it's in the house. Yeah, did, I, That dinner scene ruined the whole flow of the movie. I for didn't me. care for it. It really? drug it out way too long. I think they should have made it 10 minutes shorter. Also, don't buy the whole fucking how quickly Norman and that uh, fall in Emma love fell in love and then he's crying when she dies in the rubble. I buy that. Don't buy that at all. I don't buy that for maybe us. I buy that for a guy that's a pussy like Norman that maybe hasn't got oh. a lot. You haven't, Everybody remembers like the first girl you got with. You're just like, I think I love her. It's like, dude, you knew her for a day. He's been struggling. Yeah. He needed a rock. That was the closest thing he got to it. And he got laid. Could have been like his first time for all the fuck we know. And then he sees her murdered too, just to stack on to everything else. He'd already been getting emotional over people he didn't care about. A girl that he shared a bond with and the kind of person he was, I think because of who Norman is, it makes sense. If it was like John Bernthal or something, like, I just made love to her. It'd be like, get the fuck out of here with this. But... For Norman, I thought that was authentic because of yeah. his character. I didn't, and I love how we're <laughs> on opposite ends on every yeah. every aspect. It I don't happens. think we've had a movie like this yet. No, it it's nice. We've, we've agreed on like everything. What was your take, Rodney? I mean, how do you feel about the dinner scene? I 100% believe that the dinner scene was perfect for the development of the story of this film. Thank you. And sir. the reason I say it is because. A, you get to see how fluent Brad Pitt's character is exactly. with the German. Yeah, okay. You get to see Norman seeing something that he never thought he would see, and that is, I mean, I guess, you know, to him, love. Yes. But he didn't expect to find that at a war scene, you know? Yeah. So he finds, so you see his mixed emotions. And then you get all the rest of them, the, the other three of them in there, and then, and then you get to really find out where war daddy stands in this relationship with the characters he is the the boss like yeah. you know he has that one moment where he slams his fist down everybody shuts up sits down slouches down even uh grady just sit and like he slouches down like he's like damn I, you're right you're right like mm -hmm. he war daddy is the leader and he really yes. oh, yeah, and they absolutely. really show that in that scene 
and uh, <clears throat> just having the two characters in there, and both of them being the females like they are, it gave you a chance to see like the underbelly also of like what mm. shit was really like. And you know, so it, it might be weird. rough for some people to see, but that's mm-hmm. that's how it was. But I think I, I think it was a perfect scene for character and story development yeah, of the I, film. I, though I get what you're saying, I just think it was drug out too long. Exactly. If it was they would have made scene. it shorter, I think it would have worked better, and because it like ruined the momentum of the movie. To it me. didn't do that. For well, me. you kind of knew also, something like that though. Also, yeah. just thinking, I didn't even write this down or anything. But did they ever explain about Brad Pitt's back? No, and that's what I was about to talk about. Because you don't see need, it in the mirror. This goes perfect with the subtleness of it. Like, you don't need to know. That's just like, I was going to touch on that. That's just like, even like something small. It's a bunch of little small things that well, put together over the whole movie. The whole movie is like a bunch of little pieces that add up to the end where you're like, I feel like I know all these dudes and I ain't heard shit about them. I don't need the story of his back. I don't need to know exactly what's going on in Brad Pitt's mind in that moment. The moment moment where i see brad pitt's back that's just another little piece to the puzzle where i'm like okay this dude's been through some shit look at his back that everybody the guy i thought he was that's another piece to build up to his character where i'm like i'm believing it more and more i see he's been through some shit the way he acts i'm like is brad pitt a little more cold there's little subtle things he does in that dinner scene where i'm like okay he does have a good side to him the way he's like of course he's like sending Norman in the back, but he's like stopping John Bernthal's character. Like, look, if you can touch the girl, I'm going to kick your fucking teeth in. There's some kind of morals there. And that's why that scene is so important to me because there's so many little layers. Again, the subtleness of this, man, if you piece it all together without it being said, there's a lot of great character building that's done about as well as I've seen in terms of not telling you, but you just adding it up in your brain with little things like that. And yeah. I love that. I I do agree with you on most of what you're saying. Like I, mm-hmm. I just didn't know if they explained the back and I missed it. I do like no, how no. they left it. They just yeah. showed you. You're like, oh shit, he's been through some no. shit, probably involving a fire or something like that. Yeah. And you know he's been through some hard times. It's probably made him the way he is and mm-hmm. led him to be the leader of the group. And it's probably why the other guys respect him so much. Yes. Because they know he's been through that. Mm-hmm. And then also the dinner scene. I know that was put in there for character development and everything. Yeah. I just think they stretched it out too long. I think if they made it a little shorter, it would have worked a lot better for me personally. Yeah. Get you all don't agree. It's different. No, it's just no. for me personally. I think mo- it's y'all too. And if the movie was, was all the dinner scene, Rodney would love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would just be a, be 10, 10 for 10. You should watch The Hobbit then. Moving no, but, what, you get, you get, see, okay, so also like, for the example, Screaming Horses story was good. Huh? That Michael Pena said he talked Just about the screaming quick. horses. Oh yeah, and he's like, it's, yeah, that was good. All like, those little surprisingly snippets like that are good. But you, you got to also think like, look at to get a little bit off track with this movie, but Burnthal Saving Private Ryan too. Okay, Saving Private. It, I've never seen it. Oh yeah, <laughs> Saving but they've Private got that, Ryan's private. They've got bro. that intimate scene with him and Matt Damon in the movie, and it's real slow. It's mm-hmm. really long. But it, it's it's something that was needed in the film to at least give some kind yeah, of like it heart added and levity. Emotion. Yeah, it that's did. what I believe this scene did for Fury. Is like we've had all the bangs and the the shootouts and people dying already mm-hmm. and everything like that. But then we get this one scene where it's all slow <laughs> and it's chill. But you really get to see who each one of them are, like yes. how crazy crazy this one is, or how chill. Because I mean, War Daddy was chill almost the whole entire mm-hmm. time. Just speaking fluent German. When he you almost need to. felt like the dad of the yeah. whole family. It was kind of weird, and it did go on a little long. But the thing is, if you analyze each and every little thing, it was worthy of being in the movie. Yeah. Even though I can see how it would be long, it wasn't just kind of like, okay, why are we still here? It's like if you're looking at, it, you're like, okay, now we're seeing this. Okay, now they're coming upstairs. Now we're seeing fucking uh, Bernthal's character rile him up. Then we're getting the story. We're getting the back. We're getting the him get, getting that emotional connection he's looking for. There's always something that's crucial to the story. It goes on for a little bit, but it's not just randomness. It's not like, you should have cut this a long time ago. Move, moving ahead past that, finally. <laughs> Uh, whenever Norman is out and he he sees all the German soldiers, like two hundred mm-hmm. of them, three hundred, and he goes, yeah, three. He goes back and he reports it to everybody, and they go get in the tank. And then uh, 
the, the God the the stairs that Shia LaBeouf as Bobble does. <laughs> He, it's just so amazing how deep he gets in the character. That man can like, look at something. Dude, I thought you were talking about climbing stairs. I was like, when? where were stairs? <laughs> well, when they're on the tank and Bible uh, tells that little Bible verse, and, uh, and in his eyes, it's just so powerful. They are all prepared to die in that yes. tank. Now, I'm going to jump back again a little bit. Mm -hmm. They were all ready to leave. Yeah. Before and but they said, Don War oh, Daddy was the only one that was going to stay. And, then Norman, and who was it that was the first one to be like, "Okay, I'm staying." It Norman. was Norman. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else was like, "Okay, I'll stay. I'll stay." And then they got in there and they read that Bible verse. Uh, War Daddy broke out that uh, the liquor. They all took a drink of that. They were and just they were, ready to. They were chilling for for 20 minutes while the enemies marched, and they were prepared to die there. They were coming to peace with everything Love with it. their whole row road path to where they they got and they were ready to die and how about the deaths yes. okay so they amazing oh rodney's awake oh, now uh, okay go, no, go, go, go amazing go i hate slash love which is weird to say but the death of john bernthal dude yeah I dude, it. It, just... like i hate it because i'm like why did he go like that but then I love it because he went like that. You yeah. know, it's and, like a mixed it gave emotion. Him, the fact that he was in the tank like that too gave that moment for Shia LaBeouf's character to like come over. He's like, "Oh no, 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 yes. no!" And yeah. you feel it. You're like, "Oh my god!" Like as much as a dickhead this guy is, you got that levity, kind of like we were saying a second ago when he's like. Uh, Norman, like, I think you're a good guy, Norman. Like, once you got him alone, yeah. we might not be. And you're like, okay, this dude's not just a flat-out asshole. He's just been changed by this war. But he has those moments where he can step away, and that was another moment like that. There yeah, yeah, they're basically so, family. They're basically they, family. You saw how much he cared for him. Yeah. But touching on the deaths, I didn't really like any of their deaths per se, but what I did like Loved was... Him that they all died inside the tank. Mm. Yes. That was their home. That was their final resting place. And I thought that was a the, mm -hmm. good touch the for the movie. The two that got me was when Bible pops his head up to yeah. say Boom. something to War Daddy. Yeah, gets it's shot like, right incoming in the head. or something. Bang. It was just out of nowhere. And then how about Gordo, <laughs> uh, which that means made me laugh fat a little in bit. Spanish. The... the what is it? the grenade comes in and he just dives on top of it without even yeah, hesitating like, or thinking. No, I mean, that, he reminded me straight of a uh, Captain America. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the, the you gotta grenade. be a straight savage to do that. Well, that that touches on them being family. He knew if exactly. he doesn't grab it, they're all gonna die. So yeah. let me just die. I'm the one right here by it. I'm gonna save my brother's life. Let them kill a few more and, Nazis. And then it's just Norman and Pitt as War Daddy in the tank talking. They know it's they know they're closing in. It's yeah. over. And Gordo is or not Gordo, uh Norman, Norman. is just scared. Mm -hmm. He says, uh he says, I want to surrender. And Pitt tells him Never. Well, look in pride. his eyes when when he said that to him. Like the look in Pitt's eyes mm -hmm. whenever yeah. after he said that. Dude. Well, it goes to the character, man. He, like, the whole movie, he was not, he was this hardened, like, you could see when he stepped away that he had emotion. He's going to die. And when he doing. knew, yeah, when he knew he was going to die, that's when he could let that guard down finally. Because you heard him, would he have said that at any point before when he's like, I'm scared? And he's like, I'm scared too. That War Daddy character would have never said that. So you were finally getting to see that person. He's just been putting in a shell because of being that leader in war. You were getting to see that release. Like in that moment where he's dying, he's like, this is the end anyways. I can be real with you, Norman. Like I'm scared. Like this is who I am. I can finally be me in this moment. And that was great character development to there. And then Norman becoming what he became, became that was amazing character development. Because I was like fist pumping. Like Norman's into it now. Let's do this shit. Norman says, I want to surrender, and Pitt, or War Daddy says, don't, because they will hurt you real bad, and then they will kill you real bad. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I can't imagine being in that situation, no, just being in a tank, hundreds of German yeah. soldiers coming Shoot to kill yourself. you. Man, I tried, Norman. 100%. I tried. But uh, I know one, you did. one little scene I liked um, and really helped me... Um, connect with Brad Pitt's character of War Daddy was when they're in the tank and they run out of ammo and 
um, you know at that point that all hope's lost, you're, you're done for. And uh, War Daddy sees his crew kind of get down because they're out of ammo. But he doesn't lose faith. He, he's, even though he knows they're done for, he doesn't, he, he doesn't show his crew that. And he says, we still got handguns in the 50. Who's with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, that's when they like jump outside the tank. And uh, Sh uh, Shia LaBeouf, I think he jumps out and goes grab someone else's gun. And, like, yeah, gets the he, ammo. Even though he, Shit. you know, War Daddy knew we're done. We're out of ammo. We've got, you know, a couple rounds left outside. He didn't lose faith. He was going to pump up his crew until the very, very end. And I think mm -hmm. that was the single most, the moment that affected me the single most in, in terms of liking War Daddy and Brad Pitt's character. Elevating the emotions. Yes. Yes. Soldiers, soldiers are just built different, man. Mm -hmm. It's it's no, hard I'm... to explain, man. There are some of the wildest yeah. people, some of the smartest people, and definitely the bravest people. What about that crawling dude, though, that got Brad Pitt? As soon as I saw yeah. him, I was immediately like, this dude's going to fuck something up. Like, you, <laughs> you knew 110%. Yeah. You were like, the you're going to, yeah, I was like, you're going to ruin something, you little bitch. And then it happens. You're like, I knew it. I knew it. You heard me call it out. Yeah. That, but Brad that, Pitt basically saves Norman's life. He's like, see that hatch down there? He's like, go through it. And then they throw the was it, grenade in there, and he's like, go. Mm. And Norman the grenade felt like it took forever to go off, but I could be wrong. It did. Like, they, he's, they he was like, a while. "Go ahead, and I was go." Like, what is going on? It still ain't exploded. And Norman crawls under the tank. War Daddy, rest in so, rest in peace. He dies. And then I don't understand the. I didn't either. The German soldiers are all surrounding them. They think they got everybody. And then that one German soldier looks under there and sees Norman. Norman's just like this. And that got me thinking, like, maybe that German soldier was exactly how Norman was. Exactly. That's exactly the, what it is. From the very beginning. And didn't just didn't want to kill anyone. Just mm -hmm. was like, I'm not going to say anything. Which, I, I think which, it's karma almost. That's what yeah. I wrote down. Like, I like to think karma, like, almost saved Helped Norman. But that, I, and I it, mean, it, that it, wouldn't really happen, but. It could go the other way, too. That could have been, like, a hardened veteran that was just like, I think it's more of what you were saying, but it could be a hardened veteran that's just like, I'm done with this war. I'm done with yeah. the killing. I think My tour's over. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. I think it's the, nor the Norman innocent. aspect no, of it. No, I'd agree. Yeah. I agree. I was just throwing the other thing on there. No, I mean, it's it, a good theory. But He's, I think it's what the big, what no, y'all said first. Yeah, my theory is right. He looked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm 100 percent right. Um, one shot that I loved was how they ended the movie with the slow pull away, the aerial shot mm -hmm. with the tank in the middle, and the, they kept getting farther away, and you just see the hundreds of dead bodies that yeah. they actually were able to kill, oh, just yeah. surrounding the Amazing. tank, and that tank was right in the middle. I loved the yeah. way. So bad. Way how, how crazy did Norman look in the tank when they opened it? He was like. Oh, fucking terrifying! Yeah. He thought it was yeah. the Germans, yeah. and he was about to but die. But his face was perfect. Yes, but great it, job. I mean, you you want to talk about a movie though, like from hero or zero to hero? Was like that definition is like so well used here. Like you hear that overused, but this is like the definition of that he was literally not shit at the beginning of this movie, and then of course he's the one that survived. He was eight weeks into the army as a pussy, yeah. and then eight weeks and one day they're calling him a hero. Yeah, he earned his spot. He right. he earned it. Mm -hmm. We all give it score wise. What's your your rating? Who wants to go? First? I'll go first because I <laughs> shit on it the most. I don't hate this movie. Yeah. Um, it's a good movie. Um, m my military background just has me critique it a little more, I guess. Um, but I give it a 7.3 out of 10. Oh, come on! Good movie. <laughs> like Jim Carrey and Liar Liar. <laughs> Spit my drink out. Shit, man. I will go, I guess. I'm giving this one a 9.2. This is one of the best war movies to me in general. The character development, I think, is amazing even though me and Josh might not agree on that. And like I said, it's the impact of having just that, that small few to cling on to, and they have that natural ability. Like at, from the jump, it's right there. Didn't take no time at all for me to cling on to these guys. Ronnie, do you have a rank? Yeah, it's great. Nine? No, 8.5. 8.5. Oh, I, I actually digging. agree with Ronnie. I gave it an eight six. Eight six, nice. solid. Yeah, this is a great movie. It's a good movie. 
It's, it's, good. it's just a great. One, one one little one thing. One little thing we didn't talk about, or at least maybe y'all did, and I didn't hear it. Yeah, you do zone out. A the lot. very beginning yeah. when Brad Pitt has to walk away, and he's walking away, yeah, and I mean, then he gets stopped by the gen- or the the sergeant or whatever, and has to talk to him, then gets stopped by Norman, talks to him. And then gets over to that tank and then has to like squat down. Yeah, like take a breath. Yeah, and take soak a breath. It all in. And then sees all these German POW like over mm. on the other side of that fence. And like the look, I feel like it was a look of hate. Just oh, straight absolutely. hate when he did it. And it motivated him to get back up. Yeah, and, no yeah. one wanted to be there. No. He even said this world or this war is going to end. It's just a lot more people have to die that? first. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, Rodney. I was waiting for you to be like that scene where Brad Pitt jumped Kill off. It. It's a red the, uh, fucking spider. The tank and I'm like, <laughs> actually, you, you were the one that said that. Do something. I knew you chewing gum was going to pay off eventually. That's a lot of juice, dude, from that small bug. I think it's his gum that was in the wrapper. Oh, that's old. It is that juicy fruit, ain't it? All right. All right. Uh, movie of the week, Tyler. You got this one. Yeah. Hook movie, it up. movie of the week. Signs. Mm. Uh, Mel Gibson, like stop Mel Gibson, Walking Phoenix. Where is he walking to? <laughs> <laughs> this movie, the Joker said. This movie when it came out scared the living shit out of me. When they're at that birthday party and they're like, the news is like, oh my god, there's a sighting. They're all looking out the mm-hmm. door, and that alien yeah. walks past, and you hear that boom. boom. Oh my what god! What about the alien on the roof, though, from like across the Dude. way? That scared the shit out of me. I remember I was on the top floor and I was like, "Oh my god, I could see that right now!" And I ran downstairs. I dude, I used to be fascinated with crop circles and stuff, oh yeah, for sure. In high school, what about for sure. Crop dusting. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we'll save this for Monday, man. Rodney Russ, let's yeah. wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, this movie's great. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out. If you have Push, seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's a okay. piece yeah, of shit. Really. And follow Get us, <laughs> follow us on Instagram at by official box office banner, and follow us on YouTube. We got twenty four subscribers at box office banner. We post tons of videos, including the podcast top fives and other random videos on there. Practice. Box office banner movies on Facebook. Follow that shit. Yeah. More giveaways yeah, to we'll come. We'll definitely be doing more giveaways. When we hit a thousand, up. we got something big. So do we? That's okay. It. I, well, we do. Rodney. We know that now. You Stop. did that, Brian. Yeah.